I'm Jake Smith with Bitcoin.com. Today we are broadcasting from Satoshi's Vision Conference in Tokyo, Japan. And today I am joined by Jerry Chan from SBI Bits. Hi, glad to, glad to be here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for taking time. So for people unfamiliar, can you explain a bit about what SBI Bits is and what you guys do? Sure. Um, well, SBI Bits is like the financial, the fintech um, internal vendor. We do all the technology internally within SBI Group. So uh, the bread and butter business is just like exchange platforms or uh, co-location, uh, and anything like um, that the, the, the uh, profit center companies uh, require technologically, uh, technically wise. Um, for SBI is a larger financial group. It has like online uh, stock trading and liquidity markets and, and stuff like that. So SBI Group is actually a huge corporation in Japan, right? Oh, uh, I guess we, we like to think so. I, I think uh, we're about, ooh, about six billion dollars in market cap, so, something like that. Um, we're, we're, we'd like to think our competitors are like Rakuten and, and the folks of that size. Okay, yeah. so a trend that I've noticed happening in Japan is you're seeing more and more large corporations, household names, yeah. get involved in Bitcoin in one way or another. Yeah, uh, that's, that's actually a very, really uh, heartening change in the last, like say, six months or so. Um, SBI Group is the first financial institution or financial services conglomerate which has got into uh, like really, really um, big into Bitcoin and blockchain and uh, the associated technologies. Um, but also, as you probably might have heard, GMO, DMM, which are more media uh, and technology uh, rooted companies are also getting into it in their own way. Yeah. Um, so I understand that SBI Bits is working on building a cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, that is one of the things that we're doing. It's one of the projects that we're working on. Um, SBI Bits is the technology platform developer, I guess, development house. Uh, the, the companies that will actually operate the exchange once we build it, will, will it may, may not be Bits itself. So you might license that to other companies? Uh, mm, at first, it'll be SBI companies. It just won't be SBI bits. It, okay. it, like there'll be a, a company form just to run the exchange, for instance, because operating uh, a financial um, company is very different from writing the technology that serves it. So where I'm going with that is, uh, do you think there's a chance that some of these cryptocurrency products developed by you guys filter upstream to the parent corporation? Um, yeah, very much so. Uh, I think within the the SBI. I mean, SBI stands for Strategic Business Innovator. So, you know, that's kind of like the DNA of the group is to, to constantly search for new innovative technological ways of, of solving problems. And we always, we, we, we live by the motto of eating our own uh, dog food. I was trying to think of a, the nicer way. <laughs> what was the, what's the, what's a nicer way of putting that? <coughs> um, practicing what we preach. That's it. Um, we, we, like to, we like to use our own stuff first. And if it turns out to be very, very useful, then we, c we sometimes turn it around and, uh, and either license it or open it up for other companies to use as a B2B solution. Cool. Um, the CEO of SBI Bits, what is his name? CEO, uh, that would be Chuck Chong. Yeah, I understand he is quite a fan of Bitcoin Cash. Uh, Based on some statements uh, I've heard him make, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't want to answer for him. Uh, but um, but yeah, if you if you've ever met him, he's a he's a very very passionate and strong and driven fellow, and uh, I think he he definitely has uh, strong opinions about certain things, and um, Bitcoin may be one of them. Is he here at the conference? I uh, know he can make it today. No. Okay. Um, so people often say and catch criticism for the statement Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin. Uh, you personally, not asking on behalf of your company. Yeah. Where do you stand on that? Uh, I believe very much so that Bitcoin Cash is uh, a Bitcoin. Um, the real Bitcoin, that's subjective. Um, so you can really say which is the real one. Right. right. I mean, it depends on your your the way you measure it. Uh, if you measure it in in the way of uh, what which Bitcoin acts like the Bitcoin I knew when I joined Bitcoin, like back in 2012, 13. Which one acts more like that? It's Bitcoin Cash. Um, the real one is because it's subjective. I just avoid saying that. I, I say that, you know, both Bitcoins, like Bitcoin Legacy and Bitcoin Cash, are Bitcoins. Uh, they they have the same um, uh, heritage up to a certain point, and you can sort of think of both of them as siblings of a now dead um, parent. Right? The parent doesn't exist anymore. Um, I like uh, to think of it as like two evolutionary branches sharing a common ancestor. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. It's kind of like Cro-Magnon and Neanderthals. 
in which case which one would be which is the real like uh, ancient it, it, we, we would we would be the cro magnons would be uh, the um, right yeah the cro magnons are is bitcoin cash because that's the one that survived. does that make bitcoin core neanderthals i didn't <laughs> say it i didn't say it okay. um, <laughs> Possibly, uh, but uh, let's. I guess analogies and anthropology aren't my specialty. So, uh, yeah. Um, are there any layer two technologies like Segwit or Lightning yeah. that you think are exciting or will have practical applications for what you're doing with SBA Bits? Mm. Exciting? Mm, personally, no, not really. Uh, well, okay. So Segwit is I wouldn't really consider second layer, but let's say Lightning. Lightning is an interesting second layer technology. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's very exciting because from a business perspective, I don't really see uh, it's addressing any b use case that we could use or that or that institutionals can use um, more than just you know say payment channels or um, or or something like. Uh, you know, uh, some other some other form of private blockchain, pegged token, something like that. I, we don't really need uh, this. This Lightning is really just connecting a whole bunch of payment channels together, and some really complicated way of finding routes through them. And if you're really talking about institutionals, right, you don't need to connect to every person on the planet as an institutional, right? Uh, you have the broker broker market of the entire FX market in the world trades a trillion dollars a day, right? Is really probably just less than 20 participants, right? The brokers, right? The large brokers, the city groups, the Goldman Sachs, the JP Morgans. So if, if you grouped all of them together, that's like about 20, 20 parties. You don't need something like Lightning to connect 20 parties together, right? right? You could just have standard payment channels, and as long as you can settle balances between each other, then you're, you're fine. So I think really Lightning is, is an interesting experiment. Uh, and it's interesting technology, um, but it, I don't know what it's trying to serve. I don't know what the audience is trying to serve. What do you think about colored coins? Very interesting. Um, that's something that really, if, it ex if a solid technology existed today, uh, we would have a project budget to do something on it. Because as you, as you may or may not have heard, uh, banks in Japan have been talking about issuing their own yen coins for at least a year. Right, and I think this year is when MUFG, if I'm not mistaken. That's a bank? Yeah, okay. yeah, U Mitsubishi UFJ, which is Mitsubishi, uh, gosh, don't, I don't remember what the UFJ stands for, but J is probably Japan. Um, but it's a very, very large bank, which I probably should remember what it stands for. Uh, and they said they were gonna issue a yen-based uh, token, and mm -hmm. so has some other banks. And uh, we've, we've also said that we have the intent of doing that, but we've held back actually you know, going forward with implementation because um, to implement a token, you could do it the simple way, which is to make your own blockchain, right? Private blockchain, pick one off the shelf, you know, and, and boom, you're done. But, and, and that may work if you're going to have the fungibility of this token only valid within a small group of banks, which still may work as a use case because, you know, how many banks are in Japan? Probably like 40, and maybe only the big five need to support this token, and it's probably good enough. But um, we want to do uh, like tokens which are, you know, sort of have the most global reach. Um, and we want these yen tokens potentially not to be only valid in Japan, but valid from people outside of Japan holding it. And when you come to Japan, you can cash it in, you know, do stuff like that. All the interesting stuff that comes with a global fungible, fungible token. And right now, Bitcoin doesn't have a good uh, uh, solution for that. I mean, there are things like Counterparty and Omni and stuff, but they're all sort of on top of the blockchain, on top of the, the existing protocol, which has limited security. So we're waiting on any colored coin implementation, which is built into the protocol itself, so that we you can rely on the level. right. So that we have miners support it, and once miners support it, then we can feel confident that this is something we can. It's a solid foundation we can build a platform on top of. Because you know we're also getting into mining ourselves, and that's why we find that we we feel that if you have miners support it, then it's solid. If you just have a bunch of people running a node or a specialized block explorer on top of it. Then your your chain is only as good as the people running those nodes. If all those nodes disappeared, then your token is gone, or you know it's not transferable anymore. Do you know uh, what a possible timeline would be like for seeing a protocol level colored coin implementation on Bitcoin Cash would be? I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I'm probably not the right person to ask for this. I'm I'm a, I'm a happy consumer of that. If it existed, then we would be building something on top of it. But uh, so I haven't been paying as close attention to the developments and the discussions going on right now between the development groups in Bitcoin Cash. 
on, on what to do. I, know, I don't know if, it, if there's any actual discussion in Bitcoin at all, but at least in Bitcoin Cash, um, there are the supple, several implementations are being talked about. Sounds like there might be something by November fork, right? Um, but it, probably not the May fork, right? <coughs> probably not the May fork. I just listened to uh, Emil Oldenburg's uh, speech, and uh, I think he said uh, the, their implementation probably won't make it the May fork because of, uh, of time constraints. Uh, what excites you the most right now about Bitcoin Cash? Um, whew, interesting. Well, I, I guess just the fact that it's um, it's it's come out of the closet, as it were. Um, it, <laughs> it's no, it's it's becoming more household name. It's becoming uh, less of like what is that? Um, so I think it's exciting to see that developers, investors, um, people that. People with positive energy, which honestly I haven't seen since 2012, 2013 in this space, come out again. Uh, so it, I think the yeah the most exciting part is having the whole like sort of dry spell you know brought about by the uh, whole debate in the past sort of quell all sort of productive development talks. And, and right now Bitcoin Cash has a lot of different interesting ideas being tossed around, and and so I see the future of development is very very interesting, e especially since um. From an institutional perspective, we, we want to build institutional platforms, right? Because we see, uh, I'm speaking for you know as a, as the company now, we, we see the only way it's going to get wide scale acceptance is when when institutions come on board, when the B two B businesses come on board, and you know moving the existing platforms which work for small retail scale to institution is like very very exciting because there is a lot of money who wants to wants to come into the space. There are HFTs who want to trade, who are, but they say, well, we can't do it when there's, when we don't have a custodial solution, right? I mean, can you hold a um, hundred million dollars and insure it for me? Who's going to say yes to that? I mean, no, nobody's going to say yes. It's, it's, it's space that's going to evolve this year. And I think once institutional institutions or institutional money uh, and companies start coming on board, then you'll see like a huge like change and explosion of, of growth because generally the public the retail public they don't get involved in like protocol debates you know, they honestly don't care nor should they, they they don't seem to care about decentralization as a concept or censorship resistance some do i mean and, and some should uh, they should but, but when but you look at the popularity of paypal or venmo Right. It's just not relevant to the average consumer, I think. That's right. That's right. Uh, for the average consumer, you know, they're, they're okay with trusting an institution. But that's fine, as long as the same system can also serve the people who do want or to. Or if uh, that system can be used to keep institutions in check as well. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, exactly. I think that that's the fundamental reason why I, I kind of uh, was drawn to Bitcoin in the first place, is because although institutions may have temporary control of certain aspects of the industry, there's no guarantee that they will continue to enjoy that uh, dominance if they sit back on their laurels and do nothing. Because there will always be another competitor who will probably find a way to do a better job than them if yep. they just do nothing. And, and that is the only checks and balances we need to make sure that nobody ever stays dominant forever. Un unless, of course, they're doing a great job. In which case, that's fine too. I'm not fundamentally against a monopolies, which I, I, I suppose that's probably a very contentious thing to say, but if the monopolist is doing a wonderful job and providing low, you know, good service for low fees that nobody else can beat, okay. And if then people are unhappy if you can still disintermediate them. That's then. right. As long as you can disintermediate them if they started, you know, not treating their client base well, then that's fine. Just keep treating them well, people keep willing to pay for your stuff, then sure, then it's not like we should just say, no, nope, four years is up. I mean, you did a good job, but unfortunately your, your term's up and you're gonna have to be booted out of, uh, you, you can't do the business anymore because we said that every four years the, uh, the payment processor changes, even if you're doing a great job, just because we want decentralization. That's kind of like a ridiculous thing to imagine. But you know, I, I'm probably, you'd probably find some decentralists who'll say that's a good idea. That's a good rule to make. Everybody I, should have them. I think what you just described kind of is the nature of decentralization though. Is how can you revoke anyone's permission to operate in the space? Right. It's, it's all free market force. Yeah. And, and the great thing about Bitcoin is you don't need to ask anyone's permission to revoke somebody else's permission to operate. <laughs> Wait, you don't need permission to operate. That's the thing. If you don't need permission to operate, then anybody could 
beat you at uh, doing your thing and doing uh, providing a serv the service you provide, and you can't do anything about it except do a better job. And if you just you know if this, the world worked like this, then the only winner at the end is the consumer always, because businesses just keep on competing and they keep on delivering better services for less. One final question for you. So you said SBI Bits Group is mining, right? We are. You're mining Bitcoin? We're mining Bitcoin. Like, Do you mine both chains or do you mine one exclusively? No, when I say Bitcoin, I meant Bitcoin Cash. OK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we only mine Bitcoin Cash. Interesting. Uh, you can ask me why, right? <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> uh, well, um, be because we, well, one, it's a little bit of a hassle to have to trade out of the Bitcoins. Um, but then you can ask me why trade out of the Bitcoins. Um, because we, we believe that um, fundamentally, the, it's not really ideological. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is committed to low fees for as long as possible. And Bitcoins to, at least for me personally, Bitcoins ceased to be a viable solution for pretty much everything that I, I was doing up to this point for in, 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 as an institution when folks in Bitcoin basically said high fees are good. High fees are fine, its fee market is great, it shows that everybody's using the system. And I just thought, uh, well, no, there's no way we can support this anymore because you know, even if they figure out some solution, you know, the mentality behind the network is, is, is the opposite of what a business needs. Because a business, which will commit millions of dollars to build a platform and, and, and all this resources and time, you can't go to them and say, the foundations upon which you build your platform, we don't even know how much it's going to cost you. I mean, how can you model how much your, your revenues are, uh, are you going to make? You can't do a business model when you can't predict your fees. And this has been a problem with Bitcoin even before the fork, even before fees got big. Um, when, when you say, I don't know what the fees are going to be, then, then th you really can't build anything. So that, therefore, Bitcoin Cash seems to at least commit to keeping them low. And to ensure that they're low or even free to the people who use the things that the platforms that we build, we have to be miners, right? Because then we can say, you use our platform, we mine your stuff for free. So, so, so that you know, having that um, that commitment is the so you see more of a long term prospect with Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Was, yeah. Um, so I saw you talking at an earlier event about a hardware wallet that you've been. Are you working on that or? Oh right. Uh, so that's uh, that's actually a company that we got uh, into a partnership with. Um, it's it's actually a, a credit card like hard wallet. It's, I, I kind of think of it as like a key store. It it really is just uh, a storage, a safe storage for your keys. Um, it's kind of comparable to a ledger or a Trezor like thing, except it's like in a credit card form and and because it's uh, talks to your phone, so you don't need to carry cables in your. So it's computer NFC around. based. No, it it right. does encrypted Bluetooth. Interesting. Yeah. yeah so you, you can. How long does the battery last? About like a week, I think. It's only, oh, it's it only chargeable. Yeah, it does a little e-ink display, so it doesn't use a lot of electricity. Uh, and it, it, you stick it into a thing to charge it. But can you shut up to camera? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what, what does the button do? Oh, that, it, just, it, just shows, um, it just shows your balances. So you can see that I don't have any Litecoins or Ethereum, but I have some Bitcoins. Is this going to be released soon? Yeah, so they're working on the Bitcoin Cash implementation, and it should be released uh, within a uh, couple weeks. Awesome. Yeah. And what is it called? Oh, Coolbit X Wallet. The Coolbit X Wallet. Coolbit X, yes. All right, cool. Thank yeah. you very much for your time. Thank you. Carry your own bank with you with Bitcoin, where only you have access over your funds. Send any amount of money to anyone instantly anywhere in the world without any restriction for pennies with Bitcoin. Bitcoin.com's wallet offers a secure and simple interface in multiple languages and currencies. Download the Bitcoin.com wallet today.